I was talking to you about dentistry and, and snoring and sleep, and I told you I wouldn't have thought of that, and you know, was it something new? And as you explained to me, I realized it makes all the sense in the world. Your mouth, your tongue, your snore, your sleep, the dentist. But I know that if I go to a sleep lab, if I go to a medical doctor, they wire me up, they do all these tests, and then I see these things on TV where it says you just buy something and bite into it and it works. What kind of technology do you use to diagnose sleep apnea? Well, let me show you. Mike, this is the rhinometer, and this me measures the, the nasal airway and shows us the, the volume and the size and if there's any blockages in the nasal airway. And in fact, you might hear some clicking when we get started. Okay. And let me show you how it works. Okay, so what you do is uh, we just place this right by the nostril and then the patient can just breathe normally. Go ahead and breathe normally. Okay, it'll show us uh, basically where her uh, where the volume, um, if she matches up with the normative standards, um, and if um, if it's if she's within the standard deviation, the her nasal passage is normal. And if um, if there is a um, a drop in this graph, then basically um, it will show us that there is a blockage in this in this in the in the left nostril. Otherwise, you know, we check both sides. It takes about 60 seconds um, per per nostril. Now the next thing we use is the pharyngometer. And this uses the EchoVision technology to, uh, to basically measure the size of the airway and the opening and, if, and the stability of the airway. We diagnose and treat and document at, a, at a, another level and we make sure that um, when we fabricate or oral appliances for our patients that it's working well. First we, di we make sure that the diagnosis is accurate and where the problem is coming from and Potentially, you know, it could be from the soft palate, it could be from the uvula, it could be the tongue, it could be, it's an anatomical disease. So um, um, anyways, this, this um, machine will allow us to, with the patient just comfortably breathing through it, uh, takes about five to six minutes and we can map out her, her airway. Let me show you how it works. Okay, there you go, are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. Okay. Breathe normally. Right. And that's it. And now with this information, we're able to see all the way down her airway, right here is where her oral cavity is, and we can see a rise there because the passage um, has opened up, and then right around here is where her tonsils would be if she um, still has her tonsils, and it looks like she does. And we continue on back to the, eventually to the back of the, the base of the tongue, way back here. And at this point, um, we really don't need any more information because this is the area right here is where it's critical to see um, the collapsibility um, of the airway. At last, we have the embleta, and this is basically the, the home overnight home study, home sleep study that. Um, that patients can just take home with them at, at, in the comfort of their own home, and it measures uh, what's going on with them while they're sleeping. Um, they don't need to be, um, they don't need to go to any hospital and get strapped up in a strange bed with um, people staring at them all night. They actually get to go home, sleep in their own bed with their spouses or whoever, and um, and in the comfort of their own home um, to be able to get as natural and, and accurate of their normal sleep as possible. And in the morning, you just bring it back, and the same physicians that, that review, that evaluate the sleep studies in the hospitals are the same ones that evaluate the results of these studies. And right. the value of that is that you can get the same level of care here as you can going to the hospital. The at-home sleep study was pretty much like a, an iPod size device, and you had a finger device, and then you had a couple of sensors, and it just read pretty much how you were breathing and sleeping at night. The, uh, if you slept on your front, back, sides, and uh, how many episodes you had per hour. And I actually had 24.5 episodes per hour where I stopped breathing. So it, it's pretty significant.